2022 was a very eventful year for Chinese space with launches of new rockets, progress towards reusability, the completion of the Chinese space station, and the launches of two space planes, among other things. I'm Jean Deville. Let's review together retrospectively 2022, the good and the bad starting with launch. This year was an absolute record for China with no less than 62 launches as of mid-December. This number is up from the previous record of 56 launches in 2021, 39 in 2020. And you can really see on this chart the exponential growth that the launch activity has experienced over the past 30 years. With 62 launches, China is the second country with the busiest activity in 2022 behind the US with 85 launches at the time of shooting of this video. A lot of this Chinese activity was linked to the deployment of its national space program, so that's satellites like the Yaogans, the Tianlians, the Fengyuns, and the Gaofans, as well as the Chinese space station, which I'll get into in a bit. However, this year for a change, it's not just about long march rockets because there were nine launches coming from six different commercial companies. That's roughly 15% of all the launches this year, which shows the growing role that these startups have started to play. Among these launches, there were quite a few brand new rockets. So you had the ZK-1A, for example, in July from the company Caspace. And this is a solid-fueled small-lift launch vehicle, the first of the ZK or the Zhongke family of rockets, and capable of putting two tons into low Earth orbit, launching from a dedicated launch site in Jiuquan in Inner Mongolia. So that was July, but then there was this crazy month of December for new rockets, which started out with the launch of the Kwaizhou 11 on December the 7th. Now, this wasn't the maiden launch per se for this rocket because the Kwaizhou 11 had already failed its first launch back in 2020, but it was the first successful one for this rocket, which has a payload capacity of 1,500 kilograms to low Earth orbit. And this launch was followed just two days later by the Jilong 3 rocket from the spin-off of the Chinese Academy of Launch Technology, China Rocket. The rocket lifted off on December the 9th from the sea-based launch site of Haiyang in Shandong province, and this was China's first sea-based hot launch, meaning that the rocket engines were ignited at sea level rather than having the whole rocket expelled by a dedicated container before igniting the engines, as is done with the Long March 11. The Chinese seem really keen on this sea launch technology, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more of these launches in 2023. Of course, the big maiden launch of the year was the Jiuquan 2 rocket of land space, which came just a couple of days later. This was China's first attempt at launching a commercial liquid-filled rocket, and in this case, it was a methylox-filled rocket. With payload capabilities of six tons into low Earth orbit, the entry and service of such a rocket would have been a game-changer for the launch of Chinese commercial satellites, especially due to the current launch bottleneck that the country is facing. Unfortunately for land space, the attempt ended up in failure with the second stage Vernier engines not working as expected, but there were also a few positives. So the first and second stage main engines, for example, the stage separation and the fairing jettison all worked as planned. So it's too bad for land space for this year, but we're likely to see a new attempt in 2023 since the second Jiuquan 2 rocket was undergoing final assembly in their facilities in Jiaxing just a couple of weeks ago. And finally, there were also new things on the side of China's Long March rocket family. Long March 6A was launched notably for the first time on March the 29th, and this is a medium lift rocket which combines for the first time in China liquid-filled propulsion in the core stage and solid-filled boosters on the side. China also inaugurated a new variant of the Long March 8, which was stripped of all its boosters and optimized for rideshare. This new Long March 8 doesn't really have an official name, although some papers have called it the Long March 8A, and we're likely to see much more of this rocket in the years to come as demand for dedicated ride shares continue to grow in China. And finally, on perhaps a less positive note, iSpace failed for the third time in a row the launch of its Hyperbola 1 small solid field rocket, and as a consequence was rumored to be facing the dissatisfaction of investors and reported to have cut its workforce by half. This is in stark contrast with its fellow competitor, Galactic Energy, another commercial launch startup which has succeeded this year to launch for the third and fourth time in a row the Series 1 rocket, which is similar to the Hyperbola 1. Now, in terms of the payloads launch, the most impressive naturally were coming from the six launches which completed the Chinese space station in low Earth orbit, also known as Tiangong. 
This notably consisted in launching twice in July and October, the Wentian and Mengtian modules, which are two 20-ton modules, which bring a wide range of new functionalities to the space station, such as space sciences racks, an additional robotic arm, a payload transfer system, an airlock module, and additional living and sleeping quarters for the astronauts. Tiangong has now adopted its permanent T-shaped structure with a mass of roughly 60 to 70 tons, and will turn its focus to space sciences in 2023. Another interesting trend of this year was the beginning of large-scale deployment of some Chinese constellations. This is the case of the Jilin-1 Earth Observation Constellation manufactured and operated by Changchun city-based company CGSTL, a sort of Chinese equivalent to Planet in the US. They deployed in 2020 alone more than 50 satellites over seven different launches, including five which were entirely dedicated to Jilin-1 payloads. The constellation now has over 80 satellites in orbit, and CGSTL is planning to expand the constellation to 298 satellites, which means another 70 satellites to launch per year over the next three years. Also, I would like to give a special mention to some other constellations like G-Space and CentiSpace, which have put into orbit a handful of satellites this year for their smart mobility constellations and should ramp up deployment next year. Now, regarding China's Guowang Super Constellation, which is supposed to be China's equivalent of Starlink, there's been very little known movement in 2022. However, I'm convinced that we'll get updates next year, considering how several high-ranking officials are urging the country to move forward with this constellation. Moving to the topic of reusable rockets now, there still isn't a reusable rocket in China in 2022, but there's been a lot of progress in this direction. Many companies, including Galactic Energy, Landspace, Xspace, Linkspace, and Space Pioneer, held hot-fired test runs for their restartable and throttleable liquid-fueled engines to be used on their upcoming reusable rockets. There was also a lot of work done towards low-altitude hops with single-stage rockets. Deep Blue Airspace, for example, completed a one-kilometer high demonstration with their Nebula M prototype, while Linkspace performed a static fire test for their own VTVL single-stage prototype, the RLVT-6. And similarly, iSpace has also been progressing with the Hyperbola 2Z, a single-stage version of their Hyperbola 2 rocket, and they performed a full launch rehearsal at the Zhou Tren Satellite Launch Center in June 2022, so we can probably expect a launch of the Hyperbola 2Z in 2023. Now, staying on the topic of reusability, one of the most senior people of China's launch sector, Long Le Hao, revealed in 2022 many additional details on China's future lunar rockets, the Long March 5G and the Long March 9. And notably, there was an unprecedented tethered system to try and catch the Long March 5G as it lands, rather than using landing legs, which has been the most popular solution so far among rocket companies. The Long March 5G will launch for the first time in 2026 and 2027, according to the latest statements from the Chinese space conglomerate CASC, and is meant to enable a crewed mission to the moon before 2030. And finally, space planes were a big topic this year. The Chinese Academy of Launch Technology, also known as CALT, launched in early August from the Zhoutran Satellite Launch Center, an orbital space plane believed to be similar to the Boeing X-37B. This is the second launch of this space plane. The first mission took place in 2020 and only lasted a couple of days, while the current mission is still ongoing, with the spacecraft still in orbit, and it's been the case for a couple of months now. And interestingly, things don't stop there. KELT has also been working on a vertical takeoff, horizontal landing, rocket-powered suborbital space plane for intercontinental transportation and space tourism. It flew for the first time in July 2021, and this same spacecraft was reused for a second launch this year in late August 2022. This 3-6 passenger suborbital spacecraft was then presented at the Zhuhai Air Show later in November this year, while the entry and service was said to be planned at the show in the next 3-5 to five years. While space plane projects in history have really come and gone, it seems that China really has a fixation for this kind of spacecraft, with several other similar projects Currently under development, not just the ones from CASC, but also K6 Tengyun spacecraft and space transportation's Tianqing series of space planes. Now, time will reveal which ones actually make it to launch, which ones fail, and if the market actually has an appetite for this kind of spacecraft. So these are my top picks for 2022, but naturally a lot of other events had to be left out. I'd love to know which ones you think were the most significant this year and if I missed anything. So let's start a discussion in the comment section below. 
And with that being said, I just want to wish everyone a very happy Christmas holiday, a happy new year, and I'll see you in 2023.